Hi guys, I'm Anna White. Today I'm going to show you how to make pull out kitchen cabinet drawers. I used the shelf that came with the cabinet when well, we actually built the cabinets, but the shelf that was in the cabinet as the bottom of the pull out drawer. So all I had to buy was the drawer slides and some half inch plywood to make up the sides for it. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how simple and easy it is to make this beautiful pull out cabinet door in just a couple hours. I started by measuring the opening for my cabinet. I've got face frame cabinets, so I'm measuring the inside of the face frame. Then I took my shelf out and I cut it down to size so the width was the opening minus one inch for the drawer slides minus another inch for the half inch plywood sides that I'll be using for the sides of the pull-out drawer. I'm using a square clamped to my plywood as a guide for my circular saw to cut alongside. It's one inch away from the line because the foot of my saw extends one inch past the blade. Notice the piece of foam underneath the saw that's supporting the plywood as I cut and also not allowing me to cut into the workbench. I also ripped three inch wide pieces of half inch plywood for the sides at this point. Now it's time to start building the pull out drawer. I cut the three inch pieces down to size for the sides of the pull out drawer using my miter saw. Then I used one and a quarter inch staples and my Ryobi Airstrike stapler and glue to attach the side half inch thick plywood pieces to the former shelf which is now becoming the pull out drawer bottom. If you can use staples um, or screws, um, I'm not a big fan of just nails on a project like this. I repeated the steps on the other side. Another good joinery method would be pocket holes. You could hide them all along the underside of the pullout on the bottom side of the shelf. So I did the sides first. This drawer is longer than it is wide so that when we put the front on it, you wouldn't see a seam. I just scribed those in place, took them to my miter saw, and cut them. More glue, fits perfect, and my favorite tool ever, my stapler. I have a lot of favorite tools though. It's a little tricky here trying to staple into that half inch plywood. Um, just take your time, be precise, and then we'll do the back side. More glue, more staples. And my drawer, pull out drawer box is done. I quickly gave it a light sanding just to remove any splinters and kind of polish it off and make it look nice. I'm using my corner cap sander that I love. It fits nice into all the little corners. Now would be a good time to apply a clear coat finish to your pull out drawer. Okay, now for the drawer slides. I read the instructions on these ones. Make sure you read your instructions because all are different. It says to separate out the cabinet member from the drawer member. The cabinet members are the little guys and, or I'm sorry, the drawer members are the little guys and the cabinet members are the big guys. Now to install the cabinet members, or the, now to install the drawer members on the drawers. I'm installing them one inch up from the bottom of my pull-out drawer about a 16th inch back from the front as instructed by the drawer slides. With drawers you have to be extremely precise. If you're not, it will not slide right and you will always fight a cockeyed drawer or a drawer that makes noises. Just take your time and do a good job here. It's worth it. Sometimes I'll use tape 
to hold the drawer slide in place as I'm attaching it. That way I know it won't move. Or clamps would work too. This side was a little trickier because now I've got the drawer side on the bottom and the drawer is not sitting stable. But after putting on the second side, I'm testing to make sure that the cabinet members will slide correctly and they do. So here I had an idea, since I'm using face frame cabinets, I'll need to shim or fur out the inside of the cabinet to bring the inside flush with the face frame. Um, and that distance was half inch, so I'm using half inch plywood. So I thought, why not just attach the cabinet members to the half inch thick furring material, and then I can attach the entire cabinet member and furring material piece inside the cabinet as one. And I'll use the shelf pins to hold up the shims with the cabinet members on them. We'll see how it works. Now I know these shelf pins are perfectly level because my husband and I personally made these cabinets and were very, very careful to make sure that they were very precise. So here goes. I just set the shim with the drawer slide on top of the shelf pins and I'm using one and a quarter inch screws to attach the shim in place. Both my drawer slides are now installed and let's check and see if that drawer fits. Oh, it does. This was such an exciting feeling. I couldn't actually believe it worked. Um, it did have a few spots where it stuck a little, so I ended up shimming, tightening some screws and getting it just right. I love how this pullout drawer turned out. That's it. That's good enough for now. Well, never mind all my mix match pots and pans, but this project is done and it makes having the lids a lot easier. And because I could place this higher since it's a pullout, it gave me more space down below. So I can't encourage you enough to customize your kitchen cabinets and make them just a little bit nicer and more functional.